me. They just had a big sign in there. It said, uh, adult licensed. Like, you have to have a license to be a perv. I love that. wonder what a perv license looks like. Anyway, a little plastic card with a picture of you jerking off on it. But I like an honest man. I want a man who come up to me and say, Gina, I don't want a long-term relationship with you. I just want you for sex. And I can say, at last, I've met an honest man, a man who can tell the truth, a man who can, who's in touch with his masculinity, a man who can stand strong in the face of adversity. Now get lost, you filthy git. A little bit too honest. You wake up in bed sometimes with a, a one-night stand, it can be hard to know how to break the ice all over again. Here's a good line you can use. So, tell me your name. There is no cute name for the woman's genitalia. I mean, I, I never really liked the word clit. I always thought that was too harsh. You know, because guys have cool names, you know, they can get on with theirs. I mean, they've got a ruby tip love dart, you know, uh, uh, the one-eyed willy, yeah? I like the word, they, the way they pronounce the whole word here. They, you know, they pronounce it, you know, clitoris, which doesn't even sound sexual. It sounds like a small dog you can't find most of the time. As opposed to the way Americans pronounce it, we pronounce it clitoris. Yeah, clitoris, defender of the vagina. All who enter must find me. When I was younger, I was extremely naive about sex education, that whole business. Until I was 18, I was convinced my granddad walked extremely slowly because he had a vagina. In fact, he had angina. A lot of porno movies here. You know, my girlfriend rented a porno movie once, which was sort of pathetic, really. I, I can't seem to keep up with those guys, you know. Guy in a movie, fuck for like 45 minutes, no dinner. No stopping, 45 minutes of fucking. She turns to me, why can't you do that? I don't have an editor. I'd love to fuck you for 45 minutes, but every time I look down and see a woman, I come. That's the pathetic part of me. I have to look somewhere else. Most men like to. We don't like to look at this kind of stuff. This will make you come. You look over that. I tend to look at the glow-in-the-dark clock on the nightstand. You know, just watch it tick away. 12.22, 12.22. Fuck, it's still 12.22. Men's pubic hair, it's like this arc uh, fungal thing that we don't take care of anymore. We exfoliate, we do everything else, but we don't take care downstairs, and that's what we need to do more of. You know, if you give it a little trim every now and again, it, you really look bigger. It's true, there's this fallacy that black men have bigger willies than white men. They haven't, they've just got a tight perm. We need stuff to look at, women, so for God's sake, start putting those knickknacks you buy in the bedroom. Throw us off, like those little spoons and figurines. That way we can get lost in them, you know? As we're fucking you, we can, we can look up, oh my God, she's got little spoons from around the world. There's, there's dwarves from Snow White. There's, there's happy and, and dark and fucky and cummy. Sting often brags about having eight-hour sex sessions with his wife, Trudy. Imagine how long he could keep it up if she was a looker. My girlfriend, well, ex-girl, well, we'll just call her bitch, shall we? Always on my case, right? You don't spend enough time with me, your friends all suck. I'm not letting you stick that gerbil in there. Especially, you don't know how to push the right buttons, do you? Because the way I see it, ladies are usually within earshot when we're trying to push the right buttons. Be nice if you'd give us a hand. It's not like us fellas knowing nothing about automobiles. And my car breaks down, so I get out, we pop the hood, and start fiddling with shit in there, trying to get the engine to rev again, if you know what I mean, with a mechanic standing right next to me, just saying, nah, mate, that's not it. Nah, that's not it either, pal. What the heck are you fiddling with down there? I didn't even know this had one of those. Ouch, ouch, you know what I mean? I'm down here looping and tweaking, trying to get the thing to rev again. I'm like, you're the authority, give me a hand. How many times do we get this one, guys? Well, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. I used to go out with an AA man. He was brilliant. He wouldn't come for at least 45 minutes. Where the hell are these women in real life? Huh? That's pretty. That's a big woman. See, you can't get away with that kind of thing in Canada. That was right up, you know what I mean? That, was, that, that, that would make a noise if you pulled it out. That's, what I'm, that's all I'm saying. 
I'm kind of split with the pornography thing, because on the one hand, you've got the fact that it's sordid, and it's, it's dirty, it's degrading to women. On the other hand, you've got your cock. I do like a man who drives. I like to see a man behind the wheel grasping the gear stick. Not that I think of the gear stick as a phallic object, though, except when I'm sucking it. And women, if you want to get laid, for Christ's sake, never let a man know he's doing well. If you want a man to fuck you, look at him right in the face and do this. <sighs> now it's a dare. Now it's a yawn, huh? Oh, okay, now there's smoke coming out of your ass. Hey, put the hat with the wheel on it. I'm gonna push you through the garden. Spin your boogers, come on! I do like men, I think they're great, but blimey, can't they be touchy? I remember I was having a little chat with my boyfriend, you know, about different ways in which we could improve our sex life. And all I said to this man was, well, Maybe if your stomach wasn't so fat, your cock would go in a bit further. Hmm. So I was in a telephone box in central London recently and I confess, I found myself looking at the cards, the prostitute cards, and I phoned one up. On the card it just said, Madam Tanya, as cruel as she is beautiful. And I went round and she was ugly but kind. <laughs> I was filling in a questionnaire and it said, who would you most like to sleep with, anyone living or dead? I put down anyone living. I believe in same-sex marriages. I want the same sex when I get married as I had before. I have been accused of being homophobic in the past because I make jokes about gay sex. Which I think is a little short-sighted. Because I don't make jokes about gay people, I make jokes about gay sex. Because quite frankly, I don't find it offensive. Why on earth would I? I don't give a toss what anyone gets up to. However, I do reserve the right to find it <laughs> bloody hilarious. <laughs> Come on, fisting, that's piss funny, eh? There is something very wrong with the world when I can't laugh at the sight of a man with his hand up another man's ass. Get the hell out of here. Because as far as I'm concerned, if you can get your wrist up there, you're a bloody legend in my book, eh? How's that working out for you, buddy? Hey, ah, hey. Let's see if I can make you talk. Ah, ah. The thing is, I will look at like something like gay pride, and I will acknowledge that as a righteous cause, because that is about love and relationships. But let's call a spade a spade. Let's tell the truth. But you know the bigot at home? You know the guy that still really hates gay people, the guy that can't stand them? You are never going to get through to him by marching down the street in a big fruity hat. And no way could I possibly perceive him sitting at home going, bloody poofters, bloody poofs, hey, bloody poofters. Oh, hang on, that bloke's in a G-string. <laughs> oh, I love him now. I've been wrong for years. Hang on, honey. It's OK that our little Tommy's gay. That bloke's dressed as a strawberry. Lewis Schaefer. Lewis Schaefer didn't march in the gay pride parade. I didn't, Lewis Schaefer didn't march in the gay pride parade. OK? Because number one, not gay. And number two, I had nothing to wear and I felt fat. I think it's actually really offensive, this whole assumption that men are assumed to be gay if they're not manly. That is totally offensive to gay men. Because throughout history, we've had some really manly gay men. We've had, we've had war leaders like, um, like Alexander the Great and Lawrence of Arabia. I mean, do you think Alexander the Great, because he was gay, was leading his troops on horseback going, <gasps> like your hair? <gasps> Onwards to Persia, girls! or leading his troops in song going, I am what I am, I am my own special creation. You know, all his troops behind him going, so come take a look, give me the hook or the ovation. I used to go out with a boxer, but I wouldn't bother girls. They won't go down for more than 10 seconds at a time. This is just perv paradise, man. We don't really have anything like this in Canada. It's too cold to run around naked. My country, if, you're, if I were to wear a thong, it would take four guys to crack it out of my ass. I'm telling you one thing about Canada, too. It's so cold that in, the, in February, none of the men have uh, penises. They all uh, fold inside. We're all vagina men for about February, right up to about middle March. 
Apparently, in America, lots of women have started having um, cosmetic surgery on their, you know, the, on the old, uh, apparently to, to make it a bit more. It, there's been a big outcry about it, obviously, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, I say, I say all power to you girls! Because <laughs> vaginas have been far too big for as long as I can remember. Here's a piece of advice I read in The Joy of Sex. It said, in a good relationship, it becomes not his penis, but their penis. That is nonsense, and dangerous nonsense. OK, perhaps briefly on a Saturday night, you're both enjoying each other's company enormously. Let's both share the penis, let's both enjoy the penis, let's both get out of the penis what we can. Come Sunday morning, it's time to clean the penis. Whose is it then, eh? I think we know the answer to that, don't we? Penis could do with a wash. Oh, we'll wash it then. You had it last. See how far that gets you. Have you seen the penis, darling? Oh, I think it's on the coffee table. Oh, no, here it is, dangling between my legs. Funny, that. Of course, if penises were jointly owned, then as men got older, they'd spend Sunday morning polishing them to establish priority of ownership. I suppose cars are the most obvious penis extensions in society, but pretty much everything a man has is a penis extension. I went to a country show recently. They were all standing there with vegetables of various types and sizes displayed on little plinths in front of them and cushions. It was pathetic. I thought, why not just cut to the chase? Why not every bloke just stand there with his cock out on a little plinth? Have it judged. Obviously, you'd want to be careful where you pin the rosette, but apart from that, I think it would be a lot more honest. Lots of people think of cars as penis substitutes for men, but when it comes down to it, most men use their fingers. It's the one thing about sleaze. I'm not a sleazy person. I've been with the same woman now for 14 years of my life. I don't fool around on her. Not out of love or respect, it's just a not that good in bed. Why go to my way to sexually disappoint someone I don't know? I'm still putting deodorant on before to go to bed with her at night. 14 years, I still look down the hall like I'm getting ready for some kind of wrestling event. She puts perfume on her crotch. That's always funny, because women can get away with that. Men can't put cologne on our balls. We've done it once. That's a big day for men. That's the day we find out our nut skin is a lot different than our face skin. It was sort of different. I should say different. That's what I'm talking about nothing now. This is, uh, people are looking at me, and you know what they're thinking, because I'm not a celebrity? Everyone out here is thinking, holy fuck, has Kiefer Sutherland put on a lot of weight? I am going to dispel the popular sexual myth that we want you to swallow. Wait for me, gentlemen. When I put this into words, you will worship me as a god. Because it is indeed a popular sexual myth that we want you to swallow all of it. What we really want is for you to swallow half of it. The rest we want to go fucking everywhere. On your tits, on your bangs, down your neck, turn your face into a fountain, ladies. We'll love you for it. I like wank. That's my favorite word out here, wank, wanker. Wanker's good. That's the funny thing about wanker. I'm going to bring that back to Canada. We don't have wanker in Canada. I'm going to bring it back to Canada, and I'm not going to tell anybody it's dirty. That way, my mom will say it. I can hear her on the phone now, you know. And a happy birthday to you too, wanker.